Hello everyone and welcome back to another Signals and Systems video. Today's topic is filtering sinusoids with LTI systems and we'll see three different examples of this. In a previous video I, that I posted I showed how to do one example using three different techniques. Here we're going to do three examples but we'll only focus on using one technique that involves eigenfunctions. Okay, so here's our first example. We're given this LTI system that has this frequency response magnitude and this frequency response phase. If we take a close look at the phase, we can see that um, it's a linear phase. This is clearly linear phase. And uh, the slope of this line here, if we look carefully, we see it's at uh, 0 at 0 and then it's at minus 4 at 8. So the slope of that line is minus a half. So basically we can say that the phase of H is minus 1 half omega. So now we're asked what the output of this system is when the input is cosine 6t. So we can rewrite the input as the sum of two eigenfunctions. So x of t can be rewritten as 1 half e to the j 6t plus 1 half e to the minus j 6t. And then by the eigenfunction property, we know that y of t is simply uh, the frequency response at 6, h of j 6, times 1 half e to the j 6t plus uh, the frequency response evaluated at minus 6 times the term involving the negative 6 frequency. Okay, so then all we have to do uh, is evaluate these two um, complex numbers. What is the value of the frequency response at 6? So if we look here, we can see this is about where 6 is. And the value of the frequency response there is 4. The magnitude is 4. And at 6, um, the phase is going to be equal to minus 3. So we could rewrite that as 4 e to the minus j 3 times 1 half e to the j 6t. Okay? Because the magnitude was, f the magnitude was 4 and the phase was minus 3 at the frequency of 6. And then all we have to do is evaluate it at minus 6 and we see um, similar things. Uh, similarly, the, the magnitude at minus 6 is also 4, but the phase at minus 6 is going to be um, 3. And so we have plus 4 e to the plus j 3, 1 half e to the j minus j 6 t. Okay. And so now what we can see, hopefully, is that we can combine this back into a single cosine term, which will be 4 cosine of 6 t minus 3. Or we could write that as 4 cosine of 6 quantity t uh, minus um, 1 half. Okay, so if we take a look at this, um, we can see all we've used here is the eigenfunction property. Um, we split the input into two eigenfunctions. We know that the output of an LTI system when the input is an eigenfunction is just a scaled version of that input. And the scaling factor is the value of the frequency response at the frequency of the complex exponential. So we evaluated this, and then we evaluated it for both terms, and then we put it all back together. Okay, now, um, as we noted in our previous video, this... Um, if the system is real, and if this, which means that the frequency response is symmetric, meaning that the magnitude is even and the phase is odd, then we're always going to be able to put it back together. If we had an input of a cosine, the output will also be a cosine. Um, 
where the magnitude of that uh, cosine is affected by the magnitude of the system at the frequency. So it's scaled by 4. The input was cosine 6t. The output is 4 cosine 6t minus 3. Um, the system is phase shifted by a factor of minus 3 because that's the value of the phase of the system at 6. Okay, So this is quite straightforward um, to calculate. We're just using the eigenfunction property and doing some straightforward calculations. Now let's take a look at the next example. Okay, In this example, now this system looks somewhat similar to the one on the previous page, but now you notice we've zeroed out everything for all the negative frequencies. Okay, so the magnitude for negative frequency is now zero, and the phase for po or the magnitude for positive frequency is the same as it was in the previous example. And so we have the same input going in. We have cosine 6t going in, and we're asked, is the output the same as for the system in problem two? Why or why not? And we can hopefully pretty easily see that it cannot be the same as it was in the previous problem. Because the output, remember previously, y of t was going to be equal to h of j6 times 1 half e to the j6t plus h of minus j6 1 half e to the minus j6t. Well now, previously, these two values were simply complex conjugates of one another. Now though, this value over here is going to be zero. So we have the same term, the same first term as we had before. We have 4e to the minus j3, 1 half e to the j6t. But now this other term is plus zero times 1 half e to the minus j6t. So now this term goes to zero completely. It just goes away because of the zero scaling right here. Right? The value of the frequency response is zero at the omega equal minus six. And so we're simply just left with 4e to the minus j3 times a half e to the j6t. And we could reduce that, right? We could say, well, four times a half is two. So two e to the j 6t minus 3. Clearly that's not the same answer as we had before, and that's because the, um, the frequency response is no longer symmetric. And so we've zeroed out the negative frequency component when it goes through the system, and so we end up with a complex output. And we could see that. And we note there's no symmetry here. And because of that, the impulse response actually corresponding to this system would not be real. We weren't asked about that, but that's sort of an added piece of information. Okay, we have one more example to do. This example, um, now we're given a couple of inputs. Um, we're given that x of t is 3 cosine 5 pi t plus pi over 2 plus 5 cosine 15 pi t. And we're asked what the output y of t is of this system that has the magnitude response shown here, and the phase response, this is also a linear phase. Now I haven't sketched it for you, I've just given you the representation of it. It's minus omega over 10. Minus omega over 10. Okay, so we can use the results of, of our previous work. We know if the input looks like this, then the output, y of t, well, first we have to note, this is symmetric. This is even symmetric, right? The magnitude is even. The phase is odd. If we have a linear phase term that looks like this, we have an odd phase, just like we've had for the previous examples. So that means that this system is real, um, and the frequency response is conjugate symmetric. So uh, we can take advantage of that and just simply write our output. We know the output will be... Um, equal to this signal here has a frequency of 5 pi t, or 5 pi, sorry. And so that means the output of this system will be the magnitude evaluated at pi times 3 cosine 
of 5 pi t plus pi over 2 plus whatever the phase is of this system at 5 pi. Okay, and then we do the same for the second term. It's a linear system after all, so we can just add the results for the second term. So it'll be now the frequency of the second term is 15 pi. So we'll be evaluating the frequency response at 15 pi times 5 cosine of 15 pi t plus whatever the phase is of the system evaluated at 15 pi. And again, I can write this in this form simply because the system is um, symmetric. The frequency response is conjugate symmetric, meaning that the magnitude is even and the phase is odd. And because of that, I can write the answer in this form. If we didn't have this symmetry in the frequency response, I would have to split these two into their respective eigenfunctions, do the calculation for each eigenfunction, and then put them all back together at the end. So now I just have to plug in and figure out what these values are here. So what is the magnitude of the frequency response at 5 pi? Well, here's 5 pi. If we go up, the magnitude is 10. So we'll write that in there. So it'll be 10 times 3 cosine of 5 pi t plus pi over 2. And now we have to evaluate the phase at 5 pi. So the phase at 5 pi is just minus omega over 10, where omega is 5 pi. So this will be minus 5 pi over 10. And then for the second term, I've got... I've got to evaluate the magnitude at 15 pi. Well, here's 15 pi, and so it looks like the magnitude is 5 there. So it'll be 5 times 5 cosine of 15 pi t plus whatever the phase at 15 pi is. Well, we just substitute in here, minus 15 pi over 10. Minus 15 pi over 10. Okay, so now I can just put this all, um, reduce some of these terms. So 10 times 3 is 30. So I'll get 30 cosine of 5 pi t. And then I have plus pi over 2 minus 5 pi over 10, which is minus pi over 2. So I get 0 phase there. So it'll be just 30 cosine 5 pi t plus, now we've got 5 times 5, 25 cosine of 15 pi t minus, well, I can reduce the 15 pi over 10 to 3 pi over 2, minus 3 pi over 2 t. And that's our final answer. And so all we used here was basically the eigenfunction property, but we took advantage of the fact that the system has a symmetric a conjugate symmetric frequency response, and so we didn't actually have to write these out as their separate eigenfunctions. We could um, just use the cosine form here. So, uh, now you've seen three more examples of filtering sinusoids, and I hope that will give you a better understanding of what's going on. So that brings us to the end of our video. If you want more information on the class at Mason, or um, the ECE programs in general, you can check out these websites. Thanks for watching.